Hey, how you all doing? Welcome to this Motion 5 tutorial. So Motion 5, Apple have just released updates for Motion 5 and it's given us lots and lots of things, but one of the most exciting things that it's given us is sort of 3D support or 3D text and 3D environment. We already had 3D environments. So people who used to think that Apple was a 3D editor, it wasn't, it was 2D images in a 3D environment and that's all it was but now we've got more support we've got 3D text and I'm going to take you through not all of the changes but the 3D text today and we'll try and end up with some cool little project that that will be of some use to you somewhere you could employ it somewhere um, in one of your projects in, in a, an intro or whatever so I'm going to go to motion 5 30 frames per second and then 12 seconds in duration and I'm going to click open Okay, once we're over in motion, as always, I'm gonna to go to my 100%, my preview pane and click it to fit. So this just fits the window to my workspace in use. Now, like I said, Apple have introduced quite a few things from behaviors, filters, generators. They've, in, they've introduced a lot of 3D stuff that you can do, but what I wanna to talk to you about and explain to you today is how simple 3D text is. And like I said, we'll try and do something what somebody else wouldn't do that you can employ or incorporate into a project or a, an intro somewhere. So let's just make some 3D text. So go to this text tool here, and I'm gonna go, you'll see we've got text, and now we've got 3D text, really cool. So I'm gonna select 3D text, drag out an area on my screen, and just type 3D text. Now, I'm not gonna do anything special. You're gonna see that this is very, very simple. I've got this 3D text right here. I'm gonna to go to my inspector and um, anybody that's that's um, sort of um, okay with motion already will see that the properties, behaviors, filters, and the text are all still there. We've got the format, um, which is where we can change our font size alignments and all that good stuff. We've got layout, which is um, where we affect our layout, but we've also got this appearance tab, and within the appearance tab now, we've got all our controls to um, to support our 3D text. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back to for, for more format, and I'm gonna drag up the size of my 3D text, and then I'm gonna go to appearance. So this is really 3D text, it doesn't, doesn't just give the, the image that it's 3D, it is 3D text, and you can work with it in a 3D space, and I'll show you um, I'll show you how. So we're gonna go, um, just drag our, go group and then text, and just drag our, sorry, group, and then just drag our, um, just drag our text to the center, like so, center of the screen. Go back to and select my 3D text. Now, on this um, tab, obviously at the top, we could select our um, our appearance, could save our attributes, and we can mess up our styles and, and pick our, you know, we could pick all different types of 3D styles which are quite cool as well but I'm just going to leave it on basic I'm just going to leave it very simple and um, first and foremost we can change the depth of the 3D we can change where the depth sits within the screen is it centered is it forward or is um, when we increase our depth is the text sitting backwards um, but we're just going to leave it centered as we um, as we moved it to the center earlier on the weight of our text now with the weight if you think right away keyframes, the simple, simple things that you can do. The weight just makes your text a little bit bulkier. So there's nice things that you could do with this. You know, I could click this, make sure my timeline's at the start, click this little plus button, go up to just a couple of seconds, and then in my timeline, drag the weight up nice like so, and then another split second or so, drag it back down to where it, to where it was, and then this will sort of give if I move these keyframes, this will sort of give a growing effect of our text. So right away, you'll see that there's really, really crude, but really, really simple things that you could employ um, just using these tools really, really simply as well. Um, our front edge, so this is where our edges come into play on our 3D text. At the top, we've got square, bevel, round, concave, groove, so on, so forth, all the way down. and it will even give you a little image of what the 3D text will look like should you select one. So I'm just gonna select this groove here and we've got our this nice groove on our 3D text. Um, the front edge, so you can then change what that groove actually looks like. Does it grow or what the, the animation 
on how you've just um, what you've just done to your text how that changed as well and you think keyframes you could change what you're doing with this keyframe as well so I'm again I'm not doing nothing special you know I'm just just leaving it as it is pretty much and then we've got the back edge of the text because like I said we can mess with it in 3d space so we could rotate all the way around this text and the back edge we've just got it on the same as the front or you could have a separate sort of um, beveled edge if you like inside corners so when I say inside corners if you look around this area this area right here um, the let's say the M part of the three so at the moment we've got it on straight which is nice and sharp we could have a rounded which just rounds that bevel off slightly or we could have the the, the, the mitre which squares that bevel off um, as opposed to the rounded so you see the difference and then back to the straight so I want mine nice and sharp like so now we've got lighting so the text itself has to be in a lit environment otherwise you wouldn't see the 3d effect as such dependent on where the light was so at the moment we've just got our our light environment selected so it gives a false light if you like a inherited light from nothing and then our lighting style we could do lots of things with our lighting style so if we have our um, light below it gives the effect that within our 3d environment the light is indeed coming from below the text around this area down here so you could see that with this here now if I click this self shadows what that does is I just turn it off again just watch the text over here all it does it inherits shadows from the text that's next to it so it inherits um, its own shadows in conjunction with the light environment that we've got selected or the light install so if I um, chose above the light would seem as though the, it's it's um, reflecting from above. Um, so medium, and then um, medium left, so the light's like left, and then standard. But I'm just gonna put ours for now, I'm just gonna put ours um, below, our light below. Um, we can open the self shadows up here, to change the opacity and the softness of the lights, um, and as with the environment. Now, in the environment, we have different types of environments. So we could drop this drop down bo box down and we could have a colorful environment, which will give our text a little bit of color, even though we've got no color, real color selected. We could have a light box. So as though it's in a light box, we could have parking lots, but all these lights, I'm just gonna keep ours on field. All these lights will work in conjunction with the lighting style that we've got selected right here. Okay, so if you select you select an environment that is parking lot generally if you're in a parking lot or a rooftop the light would be above but if you've got your light install from below you're not going to get that true light install that you've um, that you've asked motion 5 to supply for you right so just bear that in mind you will have to um, just just work with your lights and your light environment there okay onto our materials very straightforward we can um, go various materials and we just click this little arrow downwards um, and let's go let's have a look at our miscellaneous I quite like this motion this motion sort of material I think that's quite nice um, again you can just scroll through the materials and you could see um, another paint one is the car paint which is quite nice quite a nice material and if we changed our lighting to be standard lighting and um, our environment to be um, a light box sorry a soft box environment then you'll see some nice shadows coming off the the edge of our 3d text okay likewise with rooftop we made the light from above You'll see some nice um, nice lights like so. So I've got my lighting back on standard and I'm going back to my, um, my paint and what I'm going to choose is miscellaneous and then I'm gonna choose this carbon fiber. So I'm gonna go paint, miscellaneous, carbon fiber. So this is our carbon fiber effect and it is quite nice. Right, um, our paint, we've got our reflective watercolor textured or smooth paint so you can choose the the, the paint finishes 
Um, again, with the, the, the finish, custom specular textured, brushed, enamel, um, and polished. And then the substance, just whatever substance. And it will all give a different effect. We can also select our glows, so it just gives our edges a glow. And also our drop shadows. So I've just turned the glow off, left the drop shadow as it is. And now I'm back to this 3D text in the standard lighting with carbon miscellaneous carbon a fiber effect text okay what i'm going to do i'm going to right click this 3d text and i'm going to duplicate it so now i've got a 3d text copy above i'm going to go to over here my appearance front edge and i'm going to change it to bevel ring okay so you will notice we've got this bulky edge now appear around our 3d text if i turn it on and off you will see we've got this bulky edged around our 3D text. I'm gonna to go to my materials, open up my metal materials and go to my um, copper material, not copper, sorry, chrome material. So metal, and then we're gonna to go to our chrome material. So now we've got this 3D text, this chrome sort of bulky outer that looks really, really cool and really, really sharp. And we could change the depth of the chrome to make it even nice, nicer, like so. Um, but we just want the depth just showing through. So whatever this depth is, it's on 74. We want the 3D text copy, so the chrome, one above, so we've gone 75. I'm then gonna select my group so I can move this text as a group. Okay, nice. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a camera and it will ask me if I want to keep a 2D or I want to switch to 3D. I want to switch to 3D. Now with my camera selected at the top, so I have my pan tools right here. I'm just going to use my heads up display right here so I can mess about with my, um, with my camera. I didn't mean to touch the angle of view. Okay, so now all I'm going to change is our... Um, our camera sort of view and that's how we're going to keyframe it and that's how we're going to make a, um, a really cool effect so I'm going to go in really really close to this text and you can go in really close to this text it's not a problem and I'm going to drag my camera along like so so we get the start of this 3d text and then what I'm going to do I'm going to keyframe this camera and then I'm going to move along in my timeline up to around four and a half seconds I'm gonna drag this text along and I'm sort of doing it freehand using these tools here and you notice I'm just waving up and down a little bit also and go all the way along to our 3d text like so and then once we get to four seconds I'm gonna move the timeline or to the end of the text I'm gonna move the timeline up to just below eight seconds and I'm gonna move it back like so to the center or to around the center of the text and then I'm gonna scale out the way so I'm zooming back out like so like so and then from this keyframe here I'm going to select this group and all I'm going to do is rotate the text like so all the way around like so so now turn this record off let's play through that timeline the text will rotate You 
maybe even drag that up a little bit, drag this up a little bit, this keyframe right here. So we've got a nice 3D text rotation. And you could have lots of more things to your to your environment to um, to make really cool sort of effects and projects. But I'm sure you'll agree that the addition of the 3D text to Motion 5 is really cool. It's also got support in FCPX as well. So we might just do a little few a few little things to this in FCPX, and you'll see the tweaks at the end of this um, video. So thanks a lot for watching. Hope this has helped you out, and I'll be back indeed with more. Um, updates from Motion or Apple um, within Motion 5 and especially what you can do with 3D stuff because I know that that's what everybody's been waiting for. Thanks a lot for watching. Any questions, leave them in the comments below.